going to be spinal immobilization of a supine patient. Before we begin, I'm going to check my equipment first. Obviously, I've got my patient. I've got my backboard. Two of my head blocks. My cervical collar. And some tape. We will simulate taping the head to the, to the uh, device for training purposes only. For this skill, I will have two additional EMS assistants with me. So, BSI scene safe. I'm going to direct my partner to maintain manual stabilization of the cervical spine. I'm going to assess my patient's radio pulses, my motor sensory. Can you wiggle? Can you move your hands? What fingers am I touching? I'm going to check my distal pulses. I will check the pedal pulse, present. Can you move your foot? Which toe am I touching? Left side, pedal pulses, present. Can you move your foot? Which toe am I touching? Excellent. Now that I've confirmed that I've got good CMS in all, all four extremities, I'm going to apply the cervical collar. While my partner maintains C-spine stabilization, I'm going to slide the collar up underneath the neck, the back side of the neck. I'll come around and I'll secure this collar. <clears throat> All right. We are now going to move our patient to the long spine board. To do this, we're never going to move our patient without the direction and counting of the head person. Whoever is at the head is in charge of this patient. So, with my two EMT assistants, one at the head, one at the feet, I'm going to grab the hip area and the shoulder area. On my head person's count, on three, we're going to rotate the patient up. Ready? And on one, two, three, we're coming up. I'm going to, while maintaining control of my patient here, and at the, the head and also at the legs, I'm going to check the spinal area for any injuries, no DCAT DPLS, no other injuries. I'm going to prepare to move my patient over to the board. Again, on the head person's count, we are going to come down. One, two, three, and down. I now need to get my patient square, centered on this board in a proper area. To do that, I'm going to have to move my patient down and then also back up. Well, again, we're going to do this on the head person's count. Assuming I've got an ENT assistant at the feet, one at the head, I'm central. So on the count of three, with the assistant, we're going to come down, one, two, three, and then up, one, two, three. We will simulate these seats on the board, perfect. In a crossing pattern, I like to do the torso this way. Instead of just your single strap, we like to go two across, kind of like a four-point cross. I will capture this arm as I'm coming across the torso. I'm going to capture this side. Again, making sure we are over top of the shoulder. I will now secure the head to the device. I'm going to do this by using first my head blocks on either side of the head. I will take one piece of tape, come across, apply it to the bottom of the board, across the forehead, and then taped to the opposite side of the board. I will now apply my chin, my tape to my chin in the same style to the board on one side. The board on the other side, the patient's head is now secure. I've got the torso secure. If I need to, I will also pad any kind of voids that I need under the back, the lower back area, underneath the knees if needed. I will now finish strapping my patient to the device, coming across with my legs.
just ask my pulses. We're going to check for the distal pulses because we're already down here. So reconfirm, I have my pedal pulses. Can you move your foot? Which toe am I touching? Pedal pulses on the left side. Present, can you move your foot? Which toe am I touching? Again, reassessing my feet, my radial pulses. Present, can you move your hands? Which fingers am I touching? And I will now transport my patient to the hospital. Super important to check your pulses your CMS's before you strap or apply any type of cervical collar and then do it again after you get the patient secured. And I'm done with this step.